Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to iTouch App Reviewers. Sorry for no video yesterday. I was out with some friends. I try to have this video up before I go out again tonight, but uh, no promises on that. This might be a late video, but I do have three pretty good stories to go over and one mini one. The mini one real quick um, is that Apple has now recognized that the MacBook Pro uh, keyboards are not the best and they are um, now being repaired for free. Apple service program. So if you have one of those, uh, go check out this story uh, and read more about it. Uh, hopefully they fix the, that keyboard in the 2018 MacBook Pros. Okay, on to the main stories. The first one here is pretty cool. TSMC ramps up production of seven nanometer chips ahead of 2018 iPhones and invests $25 billion to move to five nanometers by 2020. Uh, so as these chips keep getting smaller, in case you guys aren't you know, up to speed with this, uh, as they get smaller, they're more power efficient uh, and also more powerful. So the whole aim is to get them uh, pretty much as small as possible. And well, five nanometers is pretty freaking small. Uh, and by 2020, that is pretty ambitious, but uh, I think if anyone can do it, it's gonna be Apple. The ramp up will boost TSMC's overall production capacity from 10.5 million to 12 million of these chips uh, in 2018. The chips built using the seven nanometer process technology are destined for AI, GPU, cryptocurrency, and 5G applications, totaling 50 chip designs by the end of 2018. For iPhones, the new seven nanometer process will pave the way for the type of performance improvements customers expect in iPhones every year. So orders for Apple's custom A12 processor for use in upcoming iPhones will play a major driver of TSMC's seven nanometer chip production growth in 2018. And they're trying to move to the five nanometer chip towards the end of 2019 or early 2020 with plans to invest, like I said, $25 billion. So uh, Apple is very dedicated to their um, CPUs, GPUs, all that stuff that they are building themselves for these iPhones. And there's even talks that they're doing it for the MacBooks. You know, obviously right now they're using Intel's. Um, but I think they want to switch over to their own because honestly, they're really good at it. So that would be cool to see um, for all of us that use boot camp on our Macs. It might kind of mess with that a little bit if they're not using an Intel chip, but uh, there could be some workarounds or something crazy, uh, or you could just use parallels. Um, but yeah, so cool to see that Apple is investing in their chips. So, okay, next one up here, Supreme Court rules police need warrants to obtain a user's smartphone location data. Um, now, Personally, I don't know why this wasn't required all along, uh, but the Supreme Court has finally ruled uh, after a case here, tracking someone's phone without a warrant is basically the same as someone wearing an ankle bracelet, you know, that just is on parole or on probation and being tracked a criminal. So uh, the Supreme Court made a good choice here to basically say, you have to have a warrant to be able to get this information because everyone has their phone on them these days. Everyone has GPS on. Even if you don't have GPS on, your phone is constantly pinging cell towers around you to find the closest one for the best service. So uh, if the ISP or whatever Verizon uh, looks and sees, oh, okay, it pinged this tower, this tower, and this tower at this time, they can triangulate your location. So really, if your phone's on, you can pretty much be tracked. And uh, I, I'm very happy that they decided this. Um, of course, a lot of people will point out warrants are very easy to get depending on the judge. And that's very true. But this will just add one extra step uh, that the cops have to get before they can just track people. Um, and as you can see here, <laughs> my comment is, second top comment. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, but anyways, on to the next one. A security researcher shows how to brute force iPhone passcodes. Um, so if we scroll down up just a bit, I'm just going to quickly breeze over this. So if you have your iPhone set to maybe, uh, I don't know, erase everything on it after 10 failed attempts. Well, this brute force attack uh, basically says, if you send your brute force attack in one long string of inputs, it'll process all of them and bypass the erase data feature. So he explained that when an iPhone or iPad is plugged in and a would-be hacker sends keyboard inputs, it triggers an interrupt request, which takes priority over anything else on the device. So what he found is if he just sends one huge string of just every single possible combination on an iPhone, it will basically not allow that phone to notice that it's been over 10 attempts. It just thinks it's one. And I've actually heard uh, someone say that they had already found a way around um, Apple's, you know, patches and stuff for this because Apple's really doing this because of the gray key. Um, they updated, you know, iOS to have better protections against this. Uh, gray key is that tool that enforcement can get or pretty much anyone uh, pay 15 grand, plug an iPhone into it. And it supposedly goes through and uh, will unlock the phone. I bet this is probably what they're doing. It would not surprise me at all. I just thought this was really interesting. And uh, now that Apple can know this, I mean, they might, may have known this all along, but if they didn't know it, um, they now know, or if they read this article, they can figure out that, hey, maybe we should uh, fix this because this is a pretty big problem. So uh, I just wanted to show you guys that, just so you guys know, your iPhones and everything electronic is, nothing's completely secure. So just keep that in mind. But that's all I got for this video, guys. If you liked it, hit it with a big thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.